Yes, beloved. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, you're just getting me at the hit. I hope I made it over the hump from this horrible, horrible, uh, the only way I can describe it is a terrible illness, uh, that saw me having a fever that was so hot you could definitely <coughs> fry an egg on me. And, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do this, um. You know, what are the odds? I just turned to Psalm 37 again for the umpteenth millionth time. But really what I want to talk about is the situation today, if I've had time to really absorb it lately, uh, if I've been um, in bed for, you know, and, and if I wasn't in bed, I should have been with this high fever. I still have a fever now four days in. Not as bad. Five days. Five days. It's not as bad, right? I mean, it's... It's a little better. But it's still there, so apparently there's something really wrong. And I guess it's like a flu, but no one else got it. And uh, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's, it seems to have affected my eyesight, and then I can't see close up anymore. So, great. Okay, anyway. Uh, the things going on today. We told you, you know, in the beginning... That you would see. That I'm interested in, in today and in, in, in making more predictions with great specificity. So you'll know, hopefully, that, you know, praise God, that the Lord is speaking through me to you. Um, which you know by the accuracy of, of what's been said. Now, you're seeing um, the race riot issue at the fore. You're seeing the uh, powder keg about to go up. You're seeing uh, brother will run through brother, which is, is what the, the book of Isaiah is really describing, a civil war. You're seeing um, the uh, Babylonian captivity. You're seeing the overrunning of the United States by foreigners and the eradication of the people, which is what I'm sure now, um, I'm pretty sure I've had enough confirmation to know that the government would like, especially after the signing in of the NDAA Act, would like to get rid of a good number of us um, permanently. And, uh, and I, I'm very aware that it's a war and that the government in power now is, is at war with us and wants us dead, for sure. There is no peace and harmony in the land and um, they're, what the president is trying to do is stoke up the race riots so that white people will be terrorized. And this is part of his axe to grind thing. You know, this is part of his chip on his shoulder or whatever it is. You know, that the, the U.S. did not deserve to be founded as the U.S. America was founded falsely by elites um, who were uh, perverts. And, uh, and it's time to bring the USA down and uh, destroy it and destroy the people here, and the, the methodology that Obama is using is to use race riots, and hopefully it'll get to the point where, where people are terrorized. Now, that's the plan, because he figures white people will not fight back. You know, they'll just go hide in their hovels, and black gangs will roam the uh, cities, and any white person is now um, labeled by them as a devil, and I've heard this before from reggae people and others that the white person has a, is of Satan. And if they have blue eyes and blonde hair, then they're from the devil himself. If they have brown eyes and white skin, then they're a little, little better, but they're still bad. And so these are now targeted for extinction. And of course, I'm the level of ignorance here in this country is... It's so pathetic, I almost wish that God would kill every last person here just to save everyone from the embarrassment of trying to witness the dumbness, the complete uselessness of the population. You know, see, on the one hand, the popula from a wider perspective, the population doesn't really deserve to be here because they have abrogated, I mean, every, every decent thing about um, 
life was that there was a humility and a, and a gratitude toward God for, for allowing us to be here and allowing us our daily bread. And that seems to be replaced now with gimme, gimme, gimme. And anyone that's blocking the gimmies is a devil we need to kill. And, uh, you know, it's, and it's like that. And I, I'm, uh, I'm not surprised the fulfillment of, uh, you know, prophetic utterances that were given here and elsewhere are already uh, fulfilled. Uh, at the same time, you have an economy that is in uh, the toilet pretty much. <laughs> you have gas prices that are through the roof with the idea that, uh, you know, that just get used to it. And, and actually, the oil companies, from what I know, they could sell gas a lot cheaper. Um, there's a glut of gasoline, but it's the speculators who are driving it up, and they work, some of these are beholden to the State Department of the Obama administration. So he's clearly trying to keep prices up, manipulating them in the, in the marketplace. Whereas the demand versus supply only supports about a $2.50 per gallon um, gas price. But the speculators have driven it up another 75 cents or so. Um, and they're going to try to go higher. But it really can't go that much higher. And the reason why is because, as I said, uh, the glut of supply is something they didn't count on and that's really going to it's hard for them to bet against shortages when there's a glut and shortages alone is what causes prices to go up and people are simply driving less which also means less tourism um, less, uh, less economic activity which will be uh, not boding well for the president at the same time, you have this kind of tepid little straw man, Romney, and I'm sure, you know, say what he says about Obama, I'm sure he's a nice guy, you know, seems like a perfectly nice sort, but it, it, we're in a war. You know, it's time for a general patent. It's not time for, you know, some kind of wishy-washy American. It's time for a, a, someone who is uh, going to kick ass and take names, someone who is going to actually... You know, basically say, now this is what America is. And short of that, you know, the, the, the radicals that were really congratulating themselves now, that they feel they've won. We are a socialist country living under a tyrannical dictatorship um, of, you know, not of one person, but of a group of people. And we are being told what to do. Homeland Security has bought, I don't know how many millions of rounds of hollow point ammunition to be able to, um, you know, obviously partake in these riots and start killing people. And, you know, the government is not only at war with the people, but they're planning to use the U.S. military and Department of Homeland Security to actually start killing people from coast to coast. This has been the plan. Now, would this be the plan of, the, of, of United States loyalists? No, this is the plan of foreign enemies who infiltrate. Obama is a foreign entity. And he will, if given the opportunity, uh, create a crisis of riots and destruction and death <coughs> to justify gun confiscation and um, internment of all dissidents, or who he considers a dissident, which would be anybody that loves the Constitution or God or the Bible or whatnot. And uh, so it's a war. And I would urge you, I would say at this point, um, it's really going to come down to a war of blood between the left and the right, ultimately. Because the, the black right, you see, is left-wing. Interestingly enough, the white, um, we used to be the skinheads, are now the neo-Nazis, they are calling themselves a socialist movement as well. And they're out, you know, they're willing to get on the front lines and start shooting the blacks. So this is, this is you know, it's game on at this point. And then the big, the war, that's the kind of a war by proxy. Then be behind the scenes, you have the left versus the right, and there's no reconciliating, you know. It's going to go to blood. It's going to have to go to blood. The, the thing is, is that the left are generally pussies, so they don't, they don't fight. They, they complain and run to mommy, so that's more what they'll do. At the same time, they, 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 mommy has the backing of the big guns and the Pentagon and all that. 
So you see, they'll do that and hide under mommy's skirt because they, they, they're feminized. They're not, um, you know, the men on the left are not men. They're, they're um, co-opted by Lucy. And, and the ones on the right that are co-opted by Lucy, they kind of nod and wink at the guy on the other side. They're masons. Yeah, that's, that's, it's hard to really make big statements about anything because you have the same corruption on the right, I know. But it's going to come between the left and the right as well. In other words, we want our good... Well, there's <laughs> the other new target um, that the Obama administration has selected for their thugs to go start shooting at random when they, you see them. And I told you this would happen. I predicted it and written about it in fiction where people that have money... Interesting. Celebrities, according to Occupy Wall Street, celebrities are poor. Multi-million dollar celebrities that, that live in multi-million dollar mansions are actually poor. They haven't figured out yet, but they want to target the millionaires and perceived billionaires and people that of, of, of wealth or successful business or whatever. They want to target them for death. I mean, that's where we are. I'm simply recapping what the news has told me. Obama has selected them and said, it's okay for you to kill millionaires and billionaires. That's, that's okay. Uh, by proxy, he's identified them as the enemy. And so now you have these protesters actually visiting the homes of perceived wealthy people with the idea that uh, they're not paying their fair share, which then translates into later on the same kind of death and destruction that you had in, um, you know, basically the Hemingway wrote about in For Whom the Bell Tolls when he threw all the fascists off the cliff. They were the rich people. They were the landowners and the shop owners and the business owners the traders, and so forth, and, they, and, the, and the people overran them and threw them off the cliff. This is the same exact, the communist, the Obama-type communist, is ultimately there to murder, um, you know, the, 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 the traditionalists, landowners, property owners, and people like that would ultimately be the enemy. It won't take long for there to be a, a connection between the people that are millionaires, which the IRS is also sicked after, um, and then also the people that then have businesses. It, it may be they have five cleaning uh, facilities, you know, dry cleaning. You know, they built it up over the years and had one, and then they had two, or car washes. They had one and two and three and four. You know, they make several million dollars a year, gross. And then they have their expenses. It won't take long for it to be, you know, for all businesses to be targeted. So the opening salvo of the war has begun, and um, Obama has now decided to turn it bloody. And we told you before, and I think Brother Thomas mentioned to you, that he has a bloodlust. As you could see back during the drone days, how excited he got over that. So it, it's, it is unfortunate that... Uh, but he's no different than many of the other communist leaders from around the world from the beginning. They all have a bloodlust. And ultimately, they'll kill each other in the end. You know, th th there's no end to their perversion. And it's all because they have been ruined by Satan. That's all. They've been ruined, destroyed. Um, there is no Obama coming back to, say, the human race, probably ever. Um, the myth that all white people are from Satan is being fomented and taught uh, throughout all Obama's uh, people. So he's now calling the race war, and he's all already said through his Attorney General Eric Holder, uh, we will not arrest you, Black Panther Party. Go ahead and kill Whitey all you want. Um, we need a race war, and we need Whitey to fight back. And once that happens, don't worry, we'll protect you. We'll arrest them while we let you go free. So you can see, right? Um... It will get to the point in this country where no white person will feel safe walking, flying, or being anywhere. Uh, beatings are going on right and left. Uh, they beat a guy nearly to death, punched him out, stripped him, sexually assaulted him, took all his stuff, laughed while he was on the ground helpless. And the Baltimore um, you know, Attorney General said, this is not a hate crime. And it, and the only people standing around were all 100% black. There was not one white person among them that was all black on white. One white guy 
several black people just having fun, and it's all justified in the churches of Jeremiah right now. So you're seeing you're in a war. You see you're in a war. Do you see you're in a war? And if they can't get you overtly through legislation, they'll send their goons out to, to, to single out people and beat them up to create terror and to create a certain tyranny. Um, and that's what's up. It's really the, 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 the black thing combined strangely with communism, the black revenge or vengeance of what's been done to them by people that are not here right now, combined with, um, well, the only people I know that are really racist are, are not all black people, but I mean, it's taught that, you know, you can kill Whitey because he's not of, you know, not... So, and then you have the appeasers, you know, the people who want to get in good with the black, like George Clooney and others who are giving uh, Obama tons of money for his re-election campaign, and they seem to be fine, you know, not with the violence in Darfur, but they seem to be fine with the violence on the streets here. It's no problem. And I would just say that a, a guy like Clooney, if he was walking around in, uh, in some neighborhood, even a mixed neighborhood, um, because he's white, they would target him and probably beat him to death. And it would be because of the guy he's giving money to for president. So that's where it kind of is. And, um, you know, the, the war is on. You know, do you leave the country at this point? Um, I would say people that want to leave, this would be a good time to leave. If that's really what you've been thinking of, if you have the money to do so. Uh, there's always been expatriates from, from countries about to go under. Now would be a good time. To, and if you can't get out, okay, fine. Then you've got Jesus Christ. You go with that. But I, no, I'm saying, if you're led to, now would be the time. You know, you have relatives somewhere else. You have a, another place to go. Uh, those of you who are chosen to stay here because you don't have circumstances that allow you to leave, then you'll be here as witnesses. And Godspeed to you. I hope you don't get killed. But it's... Life is about to become very, very cheap here in America because of Obama and no one else. Uh, you know, and, uh, well, I'd say Obama, yes, and all the ones of his ilk, many of whom are celebrities in Hollywood. And eventually they're going to figure out that the celebrities are rich. Um, the class warfare is going on, and now it's basically um, the targets have been identified. Any rich person... And this is going to translate, as I predicted over and over again, and now you see confirmation of what I told you. They will be overturning limousines and killing everyone inside, that kind of thing. They're coming with the pitchforks. Um, and my feeling about it is, is you know, I know that just sounds ridiculous. Uh, in this country, the whole idea was, if someone wanted to go farming or you know, digging for oil or uh, fishing or uh, building houses or finding a, a way to fulfill the needs of people in the, in the country. He's free to choose one of those paths, you know, any path. And, you know, and hopefully he can make a living and, and no guarantee, but hopefully he can make a living. And some people got wealthy by following simply something they like to do. Um, many of these people are very charitable, uh, unlike the people on the left do not give to charity by and large. Um, they uh, have lived good lives. The Lord has allowed them to prosper. And now it's, it's, they've been targeted uh, as the enemy. They've employed hundreds and thousands of people, but uh, now they've been targeted as the enemy. They've been, I mean, they've, they've employed millions and millions of people, small business, but they've been targeted now as the enemy. So they want to create tax law. And when they say uh, tax for millionaires and billionaires, if you make a million gross from your, you know, cleaning business, you know, you have two or three uh, dry cleaning places or, or whatever, or liquor stores or, you know, some, something humble like that, you know, some kind of normal thing. Uh, you will be targeted uh, with excessive taxation. But the whole reason is because... You're not supposed to be in business. You're not supposed to have private property. So I, I don't know how much longer. I'm, I'm thinking of myself as I, I'm nursing this fever. Now my fever is coming back again strong and nausea. And I don't know when this is going to end. 
but I thought I should try to get a message to you about what's going on because so many things have happened since <coughs> since the last transmission. And um, I'm sorry, you know. I, I really am sorry. It, it's, uh, they will kill you, is what I mean to say. They will see you in the street. They will see you in your car. They will, you know, they, they will kill you. And, and it's just, whether it's because you have something they don't have, or whether your skin color is the wrong color. Well, basically, it's just white. Only if your skin color is white, they will try to kill you. And um, I, I don't know why that is. It's, uh, it's horrifying to see the president fomenting it and then having support of uh, places like NBC and CBS. Many of the executives will have their throats slit um, by these same mobs as being rich people. And yet they will have fomented the very thing that ends up slitting their throats. You know, once this thing gets developed all the way through to where someone's trying to go to work and they just overturn the car. The police in Sanford had to shut the police station down because of, you know, of demonstrations. Well, you can just imagine when the police uh, houses are shut down nationwide. This is by design by the Obama administration by Eric Holder, to uh, effect the vengeance plot against um, the white, I guess, establishment, and to overturn um, through revolution, bloodshed, violence, uh, anyone that has anything. So like I say, if you got a couple of bucks and you were going to be getting out of here, going to, um, I don't know, wherever you were going to go, now would be the time to go because I don't think you really have a chance much, much later than this. You know, um, most of the people here have been targeted criminals. Even though, you know, we didn't, a lot of us love people and, and are very charitable and don't want harm with anybody and want to be at peace with our neighbors and, you know, but, but they, they, they have um, an agenda you know they are racist, if you will. They are. They are. Um, you know, where it looks like in the case of white people, they, if there was racism, it's it's not anywhere in any institution that I see. If they are white, I just never thought of things as white versus black. I'm being forced to think that way now, but I mean, I, I never was. I always noticed that the black people were more the racist, though. And they, they seemed to be, you know, unable to, to, you know, when I tried to become friends or whatever, there was always like a wall there, some kind of a, a problem. Um, you know, but I wouldn't admit that they were racist. And I, and I, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I didn't push it. I just, you know, I'm the kind of person that just moves on. But I never thought of myself as a racist. Like if I go to a country where there's, I don't see brown or black or white or yellow. Or, I don't. I just don't see it. I see we all share the same human condition. But you have people in the name of Jesus, an embarrassment for anyone that is a minister, for sure, saying that the white people are of the devil and you should kill them. I'm not going to listen to that because I know that's not true. Just like I know the the black supremacy thing, the idea that blacks are chosen of God, and but they have to kill the white person in order to, to, to exist, is mythology that comes out of, you know, the slave times and being oppressed. So there is a need for vengeance, obviously, that hasn't gone away, and there will be no prosecution for the murders committed by black people on white but there will be prosecution for those committed by white on black. And if Trayvon is um, not avenged by uh, an arrest, if the prosecutor comes out and says, here's the exculpatory evidence, and that's why we're not you know, arresting him, because here's the... Uh, and the dilemma is hugely dramatic. It's, if you have evidence that, Tra that Zimmerman is innocent, that he really did, you know, it really was um, a self-defense kind of thing. 
And if the prosecutor doesn't come forward and just fudge all the facts and arrest him, even if it goes against the information they have, if she comes out and says, we're not arresting him because here's the exculpatory evidence, there will be riots coast to coast and killing on killing of white people, but like I say, there won't be any prosecution of black people because the attorney general is, is um, a racist, obviously. And another unfortunate thing about this case is <clears throat> that special prosecutor was assigned, she wasn't elected, she was assigned by Holder, the, by the DOJ. Oh, well then she will find him guilty. Okay. Unless Holder wants a race riot, and then in that case, just let him go. And then they would get their riot, and they would get their chance to then execute martial law. Dark times, folks. Dark times. You didn't do anything to deserve this. You just lived here. But you need to wake up now as to what's happening because, and, and you can't just go, I'm with Jesus, it doesn't matter. You have eyes and ears and legs and arms. You have a responsibility to your families. You need to understand what's going on here. What's going on is completely, utterly, incredibly immoral, insane, illegal, and has destroyed the United States of America once and for all by a bunch of riotous thugs. And they're not just black, it's the, the whole Occupy Wall Street movement has been ginned up in order to, to affect and, and, you know, affect uh, more of the same. It's, you've got to look at it more as a communist plot rather than a racial plot. But it's all working together for the same ends. Whether you think there's any merit in the Occupy, I, of course I don't because I know it comes from George Soros and Van Jones and all that. They created the Occupy Wall Street. So it's, a fr it's an assault on several fronts, and, you know, watch your back. Hey, you guys that keep writing me, you people who are, like, sympathetic toward liberals and left and all that, and you write me, and you try to tell me that Occupy Wall Street and all that bad, hey, buddy, go ahead and take a walk down the street, will you? You can't do it anymore. Largely because of Occupy Wall Street and this whole thing that's going on. It's all... Symptomatic. It's all leading to that. So you can't call me and tell me that, you know, there's merit to it. It was a ruse. I'm sure on the surface it might seem like there is, but that's, you don't dwell on the surface, do you? So the deeper meaning of it is the overthrow of the capitalist system. Period. End of story. How can that not be clear to you? Don't write me and, t and defend it because... Then I feel like, oh my God, you're so lost. What's going to happen to you? I'm worried for your safety, my friend. Um, while you still can, arm yourselves to the teeth. Because this thing will go to blood. I guarantee it. And eventually, like I say, it's, it's going to end up being, you know, two philosophies, really. The communist ideology and the left versus the freedom, supposedly, of the right. But, I mean, you know, now we find out the right is co-opted by the same people on the left, the progressives, which is really another name for the Communist Party. So, you know, basically, it's going to be that progressive, satanic, um, atheistic um, global movement. And, and by the way... They're so ignorant. These people are so stupid that you can't even have a conversation with them because and Trish said this be beautifully. She said this, and, and I have to go along with it. She said, they're so stupid that, that they think you're dumb. You know, in other words, um, they're so stupid that anyone who is smart they think is dumb. That's how far stupid they've gone. They, they, you know, they, they don't have any bearing on the truth. They have no compass. They have no moral compass. They don't care about the death. The guy that got uh, beaten up, who knows what party he was a member of. Maybe he could have been a Democrat. Or could have been a Republican. Could have been an, uh, an independent voter. We don't know. But he was just there on St. Patrick's Day, a visitor. 
And, you know, it's proven that, you know, the cities are not safe. The enemy is any white person and anyone that has perceived wealth. They haven't perceived the celebrities as having wealth yet because they support all the left-wing causes. In other words, a guy like Michael Moore, a multi-zillionaire, can go down to uh, Occupy Wall Street and be welcomed like a true bre you know, brother in arms. When the fact of the matter is, he's got investments, and I'll guarantee you some of those investments are in things that would be completely against, the totally capitalistic. And they don't turn on him because they're not bright. They're dumb. They're falling victim to the social engineers that put the movement together in the first place. So that's how I see it, you know, and, and you know, you can call me a, a right-wing conservative. You know, I'm cling, I cling to my guns and my Bible, or my, not in that order, my Bible and then my gun. In other words, I cling to, to Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I cling to uh, the Constitution and the Bible that, that, the, that a man has a right to own property in this country. I've been battling the gang stalkers and all the people that, you know, I was against social conformity into initiation into Satan. I've been against that since I was three years old. There is nobody who fought that more than me. But they wouldn't listen. And now the symptoms of that that I spoke of is what you see. You know, look. I don't begrudge anyone their, their, to do anything they want in, on their free time, consenting adults. They can do whatever they want. I've warned about the dangers of illicit sex because it causes pain. Emotional, and tra it, it causes tremendous soul pain to have, you know, to have sex just for, you know, lust purposes. I've tried to instruct people on that. I just have, have proven beyond all doubt that... You know, sex uh, is basically something that Yahweh said in his word to not take lightly, you know, that, that basically uh, it will not be respected. I mean, most of the people that have been brought down in the Bible, they were brought down by women. And it's not the woman's fault. I'm saying it's, you know, and then, of course, if you don't have sex, then a lot of the satanic stuff has sexual ritual within it. And if you don't partake, then they suddenly brand you as the bad guy and they come after you wanting to kill you. I, I, it's amazing. It's just like the guy at the party that isn't drinking and they finally grab him, stuff alcohol down his throat and strip him of all his clothes and jump on him to have sex with him and make him debauched. You know, they, they can't stand someone being upright in the midst of them. You become a target and then they want to wipe you out. And they want to say, ah, come on. What's a little spreading of fluids between friends. Oh, I mean, I got, in Hollywood, I got really, really bugged with that. I was beholden to my wife, you know, uh, and, and I'd go, the, go to these uh, story meetings and stuff, and they want to turn them into orgies, and I just was like, and they just told me to go home. In other words, I, had I partaken, I would have been in, if I, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm married. <laughs> you idiot. No, I actually stuck to that. And, of course, that is the thing, that kind of corruption. That's just on a small, I mean, that's just on a, on a you know, on a, on a physical perverted lust thing. Let's start magnifying that to criminality. Oh, come on, what's a little criminality in between friends, right? What's a little, cr come on, look the other way, that grand jury. You don't have to testify that anything happened. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And it just becomes a quid pro quo. So the system is like that, you know. And once you're in it, it's a collective, and it's the same thing in Proverbs 1. And basically, that collective is, is kind of looking, uh, you know, for uh, innocent ones to destroy, to take what they have, to um, kill them as a sacrifice to their god, Satan, and uh, to, to, to relish in the spoils. And the world system that you see today is based on thousands and thousands of years of that kind of thing. America was founded to, to resist that because that kind of corruption is what leads to the Roman Empire. That kind of corruption leads to tyranny. That's what leads to <coughs> Soviet Russia. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, 
excuse me, that kind of corruption leads to um, all the troubles that you see in the world can be traced to just saying, you know, here we are amongst friends, it's okay. Ah, oh, we're amongst family, it's all right. Ah, oh, let your hair hang down, it's okay. You know, meaning, you know, jump in. And the thing is, uh, oh, well, you could do that, I suppose. But what are you serving? Now, I take the whole sex thing very seriously. I'm kind of past the age of all that, but I mean, I'm, I take it very seriously in terms of the spiritual implications of splitting your soul off from one partner to another or to a group. Because once you bow down to the group for acceptance and then, and then to be let in, the next thing you know is you're a slave to that group and they're slaves too. They're all slaves. And that's what's happened to our business communities. That's what's happened to the entertainment business. That's what's happened to uh, the, the world in general, the, the country in general, which is why um, eventually it gets to the point of collapse. People do not hold themselves up upright because they, once you get rid of the fear of God, you have no reason to. Hey, it's just among friends. Come on, jump in. Well, if, they're, if you're afraid of God, you won't jump in because... You're afraid of what God can do to you, i.e. put your soul in hell or destroy it. So you, become, you take the rejection of the group because you love Jesus Christ and you know what can happen because you've been instructed. So you, you walk away. And then you can never go back. Most people in this country have not walked away. You see, and at the end of the day, what they really want is you to, in your heart, reject God. The whole process of just, oh, it's okay, jump in, has to do not with jumping in, drop your pride, what are you so precious? <laughs> what are you guarding? It doesn't, it's not that. What they want is you to, to deny, reject God in the process is what happens. And then the Lord has nothing to do with you. Once you're, once you're through to the other side, he just isn't there. You can say you love God, but it doesn't matter anymore. You're already spoken for. And that's what that game's all about. And unfortunately, the, the enemy uses lust uh, for power, money, and sex, basically. Uh, position, status, social status, respect, being cool, all that you get when you jump in, Right? You're a fool, an idiot, if you don't. And it's always that way whether you're dealing with the mafia, whether you're dealing with uh, the, the fraternity, whether you're dealing with an elite army unit. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's this circle of shame just keeps on and rolling. And this is why there's suffering and why countries collapse. This is why America will collapse. Oh, no, I've had the witches. Oh, yeah, they have their own police force. I mean, yeah, they send the witches after you and everything else. If you want to walk with the Lord, they're going to send people after you. And meaning, if you're going to walk with the Lord, you're not jumping in with them. So they send the witches after you and they put whammies. I mean, I think this whole sickness I have, because Tristan, no one got it around me. I don't know one that has this illness. Yeah, it's a doozy. It's almost as bad as the one in 2010. I barely got out of L.A. that day. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh God! I believe my my uh was that clear? Meaning my fever was as high as two thousand ten, which you know is like like the covers on fire type fever, and then I've had chills and. It just hasn't been a normal flu, you know, with a fever. Like the fever I have right now is about, this is like a normal fever, you know, just like an elevated temperature type fever. It's, you know, I'm talking about where it's hot to the touch, where it's just like you need to be in, you know, in a bucket of ice or something. And, you know, this is, this is just some, some exotic thing. Maybe it could have been West Nile, an early mosquito. I don't know. 
I'm not worried about it, though. You know why? Because my Lord says, you know, I'm here until he pulls me out. And, and actually, I'm grateful this happened because I needed, I needed a, a shock. I needed to be stopped. You know, I needed some, uh, to, some straighten up some behavior and some things. No, nothing that nefarious, but just, just I needed to be stopped and, and, and reset. I needed a reboot. I was tired, and, and I I hadn't, you know, nothing had stopped me. I just kept on it going, you know. And you, you didn't hear from me much, but, I mean, I was going, dealing with my mother's death and that, and, you know, dealing with uh, uh, things here, dealing with my own, um, you know, walk with the Lord as to what, okay, Lord, what's next? We've had our 10-year anniversary. That was kind of like, is, is that it? I mean, is there something else? Uh, do people really want to hear this message or don't they want me to just shut up and go away? You know, I'm beginning to think, you know, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. I mean, I'm so controversial. The people that want to talk to me that I, I like certain people, but they don't ever want to bring this up, these talks up or acknowledge that I do this because... You know, they may know I'm right on some level, but they just can't go there because they're afraid of, you know, their own peer group jumping on them. So there's this whole stink going on, and it looks like I'm creating, but I didn't create it. I'm simply exposing it in, in, in a very um, generalized way. And I don't accuse anybody. I, I understand fully, you know, jumping in. It makes more sense to do that than to not, in terms of just if your mind is a carnal mind. But you see, a twice-born would never do that. Let's get to the twice-born. Jesus, when he carried his cross, you know, up to Golgotha, and when he was up, he was surrounded at that time with once-born people only, people that couldn't see, they didn't know who he was. And it was very difficult because of the peer pressure to stand out from the crowd and help him, as Simon of Tyrene, the guy that uh, helped Jesus carry the cross. He, uh, it was very, very difficult for that man to stand out, now, or for anyone to defend him, because they were all just like, they were just like the same mob that was on that guy in Baltimore, same thing, you know. And there were, you know, some people that stood up. But in general, you know, they basically crucified him and gang raped him. And, you know, he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I suppose that's what you should say if you're in that situation getting beat up on. Lord, forgive them, for they don't... I mean, those, the animals that attack that guy, they have no idea what they do, I'm sure, every day of their lives. You know, they're just like, um, react to this, react to that. I'll bet you anything, they're in gangs and easily to control and criminality. And they just go wherever the... Whatever's good, money, power, sex, whatever gives them that, that's what they do. I doubt there's any one of those people who's ever read a book or ever, you know, been outside their sphere of, you know, a, a horrible ghetto situation. And I, I have compassion. Look, I understand. I'm just like, I'm watching the train wreck happen. I'm watching people that meant, you know, no harm. They're, what they're saying is, it's okay to kill someone because Trayvon was killed. So go ahead and kill any white person. Obama has sanctioned that along with Eric Holder. So that's basically the nod that he gave. And I'm, I'm horrified that a president would do that. And then the white people that are su supporting him will have their throats slit in the end. And maybe it just has to go like that. The blacks are going to kill all the whites. And then they can have the planet. <laughs> <coughs> no, of course that's stupid. They would find that the wars go on. You know, it'll be black on black. There's more black on black violence than anything else. So, you know, the turf war will go on. Anyway, all this that's going on is is made me very sad. And I'm here to make predictions. Anyway... The people around Jesus in the end were the once born. And if you're twice born, then everything I've said today makes sense. Everything I've said today comes from the Holy Spirit that showed me the truth about all things. And said, of course you don't jump in with them, because if you did, you would not be my son. 
I would be cut off from you. I would have nothing to do with you. So I remember when he told me that years and years ago. And there were Christians coming around telling me to jump on it. But because the Lord told me, if you go over there, I will reject you forever. That's pretty heavy. That was the thing I couldn't bear because the only place of solace I have is like you, Psalm 91, the secret place of the Most High. He takes me there when I'm troubled. Like during this illness where I was, couldn't even see. My hand in front of my face was so blurry from the heat. And uh, he made it so I didn't care. You know, he made it so I, I could get through it. You know, that I wasn't overly concerned and running to this one and that one to cure me. That the cure was my Lord himself. That he was the one that would guide me left, right, or straight. And even the illness itself was a gift because it stopped me. I needed to be stopped. Oh, because I was anxious still. You know, I've been in pain and anxious for years and years. You know, it's like, I, I know what these what you're going to feel like being a, being a white man and being a target. I've already known what that was like by being a lamb and being a target. And it's no fun, believe me. It creates t tremendous anxiety. And they love it when you, you know, take it out on yourself and eat and drink and, you know, inebriate and this and that. They, they love that. But, uh, th see, that's for them to do. And I said, you know, it's up to them to get drunk. It's up to them to have to anesthetize and self-medicate, not us. We are free. We are twice born. We don't do that. I'm not against people partying up and, you know, uh, wine bibbing and all that for party purposes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about escape purposes. I'm talking about quelling the pain of the oppression of the world. We are to go to Yahweh, not to the bottle, not to drugs, not to pain pills, if we're in pain. And if we really believe what the Bible says, he will lead us into all good things. Am I right? He will lead us into the right way to live, the right way to be, the right way to think. And those things will lead unto joy because they will be the things of joy, even in our older age. And it won't matter what people think or don't think. They will eventually see that their way was folly. They will envy you, and in envying you, they will do likewise as you. But not if you're doing what they're doing. Hence, um, um, Well, if you want the evidence for, for jumping in and being part of the collective, I mean, we've gone over this so many times, but I suppose it can't be overdone, you know. Proverbs comes right after Psalms, because Solomon comes after David. And I know you know, you know it. Uh, Proverbs is the great thing to teach your son and daughter. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace upon thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if they sinners entice thee, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance and fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot amongst us, in other words, jump on in, and let us have one purse, you know. My son, walk not thou in the way with them, and refrain thy from the, refrain from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. And they're also above the law, so... Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, 
and they lay wait for their own blood and lurk privily for their own lives. So the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which takes the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. In other words, everyone that goes that way winds up destroyed. You reap what you sow. It's like the poem from Rudyard Kipling. You know, if the crowd's going one way, but you know that's the wrong thing. You stand your principles. If you know the Lord does not want you to jump in and, and basically renounce him by running off with the devil, to come back on Sunday and, and, have, and have no connection with him whatsoever. I mean, basically, if that's your idea of religion or of Jesus, believe me, you don't understand. You want to, I pray right now that you were twice born, that the Holy Spirit would be, awaken you, that you would be born again, because then, see, then you can see all this without my even having to say it. And when you're twice born, you have the power of reasoning. You can see what's right and what's not right. You can see which way to go and which way not to go. You can see that that choice that you're given really is a choice between cutting off God and going with God. You see what I mean? And they'll laugh at you from their, you know, their power, their positions of power and all that, that you're never going to get anywhere that way. But, you know, the thing is, is that's a choice you make. You know, you choose to serve God or choose... Uh, the devil or money. You know, if you want money, then jump in. But in the end of that way is death and destruction and destruction of your family. Look at my family. Everyone dead but me. Everyone dead but me from a generational curse because of what elders did before me in terms of jumping in with... I mean, it's ironic that I'm talking about this because my ancestors were very much into playing the game. I'm not talking about a game of, you know, being nice to people because you're trying to sell a house or something. I'm talking about, um, well, I can't do that. I, I've been told people, like, I can't, I can't be nice and I can't be tame and I can't uh, refrain my tongue from saying the truth when you have me in a social situation. So if you can't handle that, don't have me around. But, in my own family and my own ancestors would have people killed. You know, they don't want to talk about it. It's something people don't like to talk about. But in other words, there was something wrong done and, and it was visited upon my family to where my brother, my father, my mother now, all gone. I mean, and, and I'm hoping my daughter... Um, marries and has a child, but if she doesn't, then the line is ended. I mean, it's okay. I understand. I'm eternal. You see, being twice born, I don't need that. You know, I live on forever. It's not a seed thing. It's not genetics. But it just shows a curse, you know. And this is the result, directly, of reap what you sow, doing bad things to get a good result. Doing bad things to um, serve society or mammon in order to be wealthy. In order to be powerful. In order to be respected. <coughs> in order to not be thought of as a fool. In order to not be considered a loser. And if you fear God, folks, believe me, you're not going to fall into any of those things. Because that fear of God, if you're twice born, is so strong. You know, it's one God, you know, and basically you need to be born of the Spirit to be alive. And people can't be born of the Spirit unless God does it in you. 
unless Yahweh pulls us to the sun, we can't be free because the sun is what is the truth that sets us free indeed. Without the sun, we have no second life. We have no life of the spirit. Without the life of the spirit, everything I'm saying will make no sense. You're just basically in the carnal world and that's what all that makes sense. I have no, like I told someone the other day, I've got no attachment to anything in this world. I have things, yes, that things need to be dealt with. And, uh, but it's in a detached way, you know. Like businesses, and they're in a detached way, I go at business. It's, it's, it can't be anything, it can't be my God. It can't feed me, and it might go belly up. It might hit the wall. The government may come in and shut it down. You know, I don't know what can happen, but I just know that it's, there's no guarantee by jumping in with polite society and everyone singing kumbaya and hoping to get through it and, and justifying their bad deeds and covering it all up with their charities and their fake love. It's like, that's just ain't gonna, don't you understand? That way of, see, everything you see that's happening here with the race wars and this and that, and you think how bad it is, they're coming after you out there, polite society. They're coming after the, the, the who, who, uh, it's the rich people. It's, it's the people that built the country. It's the people that, that own businesses. It's the people that have things. They're coming after you. The government has unleashed them on you. And then if you're just, you know, driving while white, I suppose they're after you then too. And uh, it's all being sanctioned by Eric Holder, Communist Obama, Communist George Soros, and the people that really run the country that is not elected. And I just, you know, and Romney doesn't seem to me to be a guy that can actually overturn this whole problem. Because, see, people around me, they, they just, I don't know... I know very few people that whose eyes are open who actually understand what's going on. You gotta be I'm actually beginning to think you have to be twice born. You have to be touched by the spirit and not connected to them in order to see what's happening. But they can't see because they're connected to one another and not to the spirit, and they're they're once born and perhaps even twice dead. In other words, they're dead in the spirit and all they see is the carnal world. All they see is their their money or lack thereof, their target, the people that are holding them down, they got to get them. You know, they, they're in this carnal struggle. And, you know, they're all struggling over their Wheaties and their cans of milk or their whatever it is they're struggling over, they're going to fight over it. And, and, you know, because they are not twice born, uh, otherwise they would realize that that's ridiculous. They don't understand that by killing people, uh, they create causes against themselves that will ensure their destruction later on. So the incoming people, that if they had a revolution that killed everyone here they didn't like, they would have sown the seeds of their own destruction in the way that they put down the other people that would happen to them later on too. Justifiably so because we reap what we sow. I mean, Jeremiah Wright, Obama's preacher, um, basically he's still stuck on this idea that all these Europeans, the philosophers and the, and the politicians and people that shaped our destiny, are all evil. He hasn't gotten a bigger picture of that his own black community is just as evil as anything else he's pointing at. It's all of us, Mr. Wright. We're all stuck in the same boat. But you fomenting race wars and black on white killing, all you're going to do is ensure your own death. And you, to me, are not, I can tell you, sir, you are not twice born. You are once born. Or you're being dishonest because the Holy Spirit would never want you to preach that kind of division. He would rather have you preach the truth, which is that we're, we, as humanity, black, white, red, yellow, whatever color, ridiculous. We're all fallen, fall short of the glory of God, and we're all sinners. We need to work this out together. By understanding, first of all, that we need to be born again. 
through faith in Jesus. Look, if you aren't born again, you just ask the Lord, Jesus, if you're real, like Zeph says you are, come into my life, open my eyes, make me twice born, and I believe you are the Son of God, that you died and then rose again from the dead, and that you, that, that through you, by being washed in your blood, I'm forgiven of all sins, past, present, and future, and that you have set me free, Lord Jesus, because you are the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes through the Father without you, that you are the way. Please, Lord, you know, set me free. Come on in. And that's really all it is. And then follow it. Oh, you'll eventually get to... No, no, and if, if anyone has God, Creator, they have Jesus. There are people that don't have the architecture or the knowledge of, say, Christianity 101 or the Bible, but they, they still have the Lord, you see, because... Ultimately, it's uh, a heart thing, not a text thing. And I can't determine that. I just know God is everywhere on this planet. Well, the fever's getting me. So here we are again, day number four or five. And it hasn't subsided, so I thought I'd get to you. And if anything happens to me, um, well, you know, at least you got this. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I can't even believe I got a fever again. Okay, with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you, and I'm praying for you, and I'll see you next time. The pred I never made predictions today. I said I was, then I didn't, and that's the kind of flake I am. <laughs>